a very warm good morning to all of you uh, a very beautiful and a bright day today let's spread hope and happiness all around may this day prove again to be very amazing and productive day as we had yesterday and uh, let us learn more about the childhood uh, developmental theories and uh, we have very eminent guests today as well to impart to us for uh, discussing the topic regarding few more childhood developmental theories on that positive note let's start today's sessions for we uh, for that we have here professor kamlesh s rathore from gujra government college of nursing us all regarding the cognitive developmental theory as well as the moral developmental theories from the gujarat state from later completed his ms in nursing in community health nursing specialty from dy patel university pune he has pursued his phd in community health nursing from rajasthan he has a vast span of teaching experiences over 10 years and he has participated as well as organized various national and international service uh, uh, conferences seminars and workshops he is actively partaking in numerous research activities and published many uh, in numerous journals as well he is also serving as a phd guide for many institutes and universities he is a member of tni and somi on his expertise in conducting inspections and examinations under various universities and courses it's a privilege to have you with you i welcome you sir for uh, the session as a moderator over to you sir okay minchu ma'am thank you can you hear me can i start yes okay a very beautiful good morning to one and all hope you all are safe at your home hope you guys enjoy the previous session of this webinar let me introduce myself i dr priyesh jain sorry Inter to hello interrupt sir hello yes your voice is little uh, hello. low sir now okay now now okay so little louder hello hello yes sir no no now, now okay i think sir it is audible but it is very low okay a very now a very beautiful good morning to one and all hope you all are safe at your home hope you guys enjoy the previous session of this webinar thanks npa team for this wonderful webinar let me introduce myself i dr priyesh jain principal of kamdar college of nursing rajkot gujarat i will take this i will take this opportunity to introduce highly skilled professional with extensive experience person i would like to introduce mr kamlesh rathod sir sir has completed gnm from government college of nursing jamnagar and completed post basic bsc nursing and msc nursing from government college of nursing ahmedabad sir having more than 32 years professional experience in clinical as well as academic field of nursing sir is currently working in the government college of nursing bhavnagar gujarat sir has work as a trainer of training of various program such as hiv aids rti sti community health officer induction program for staff nurse and training technology sir has also contributed his experience as a public informatic officer rti act 2003 sir has membership of various association he has published various research paper in national and international journal as well as the organize the various national and international conference so now i would like to welcome mr kamlesh rathod sir to beginning this session okay good morning sir good morning everyone i hope my voice is audible to everyone is my voice audible to everyone priyesh sir 
yes yes sir audible sir okay uh, i think you are saying screen share stop screen share okay uh, now uh, before starting this session i would like to thank nursing teacher associations to organize this webinar and giving me privilege to participate as a speaker in this childhood developmental theories today is the fourth session and uh, we are going to not learn but we are going to enjoy this session uh, that is a, a piaget's developmental theory of cognitive developmental and lawrence kolbeck's theory of moral development i wish everyone will enjoy not learn but enjoy the session that i will try my level best to make you enjoy the session before starting once again i would like to thank gujarat branch president professor binu joy secretary professor imanshu sir then national president our dr farooq khan sir then national secretary professor manish kumar sir and they have given the this opportunity to come together here uh, through this webinar let us start the session and uh, first of all we will discuss uh, piaget's cognitive developmental theory of childhood so that we can understand how a child intelligence is developed i am just sharing the screen you give me a few seconds it will take I was born in 1896 in the Nutshell, Switzerland, and died in 1980 in Geneva, Switzerland. These are the two pictures which shows us where the sir was born and has his last offices. At the age, sir is telling that I wrote a paper on an albino sparrow, which was published and was the start of my famous career. I married in 1923 and had three children: Jacqueline, Lawrence, and Laurent. Now, the sir is telling, I study my children's intellectual development from infancy. Means sir has started observing his own children from the infancy how they intellectually develop, and based on these observations throughout, he developed the theory of cognitive development. while studying my children i developed theory concerning how children learn so let us start jean piaget's theory of cognitive development which consists of four stages of intellectual development means an individual develops intelligence through four stages of life where and how that we will learn in the following session here is the short brief of the piaget stages of cognitive development the stage 1 birth to 2 year that is known as a sensory motor stage stage 2 is a pre operational stage it's around the about age of 2 to 7 years concrete operational stage that belongs to the 7 to 11 years of our life span and after the 12th year we ourselves start formal operation stage and that is how we develop our intelligence throughout these stages of our life span let us discuss the every stage in a somehow detail the first stage is known as a sensory motor stage the title is self sensory motor means from our five sense organs we are learning the things we are recognizing our brain is interpreting and through these stages the child begins to develop the some kind of reflexes habits hand eye coordination but what is the important in this stage is object permanence it means knowing something is exist but actually it may not be exist uh, in the video of the last session this we will see how object permanence is can be seen 
Experimentation and creativity is the great in this age group. Piaget referred to the children in this stage as a little scientist. They are exploring in nature. We might have our toddler seen. They are exploring everything, not sitting a quiet for a second. And that is how we are uh, observer for this, our children also. Now in this age group, trial and error experiments are occurs. The individual learns through the trials and errors and he remembers the trials, what happened, and in the next lifespan, he try to remember that and learn better. Then. So here, to understand the Piaget stage of sensory motor and object permanence stage one, I have given the link. If you have time, you will see. End of this session, we will see the throughout the video, which will show the all stages of this development. But for individual, you can have this. The second stage of Piaget's theory, it's a pre-operational stage. It's a belong to the two to seven years of our age. During this stage, the child begins to develop ability to represent object with image in words. Means if we saw some image, if we ask some word and the child is trying to learn and represent that object, what is that? The language skills start from this age after the two years the word child sees and he imitate our words and learns in this phase. In this age group, imagination is the more prominent. Through the imagination, the child learns. Children learn through the imitations in play during this stage. What we do, our children observe and they do. Suppose we are doing the saving. They will start brush, taking the brush in the absence of us and start brushing the, their chin. So they learn imitating. They begin to use reasoning. However, it is mainly intuitive instead of logical. Means at this stage, child does not develop logical thinking, but they intuitive uh, reasoning is there. Again, another link is given here to understand this stage in a detail through the video in the YouTube, which is also very nicely uh, explained. I hope you will see that. The stage three here, that is the operational stage, concrete operational stage. It is in our lifespan, seven to 12 years of age. During this stage, the child begins to develop the fundamental of logic, ability to sort the object, ability to classify the object, understanding of conservation, physical quantity do not change based on the arrangement and appearance of the object. Here the few pictures are there to make you understand more better way. See, in the number one picture here, the child is showing one plus one is equal to two, means logical thinking is started in this, in the sequence fundamental. Here can sort the objects. Here they can understand the logically sequence of what is the sort and what is the B long one and they can arrange the things. So at this 12 up to the 12 years of age, concrete operational is occurring in the child and child learn through this logical thinking that is the main uh, concept of this stage. Now stage four, formal operation after the in some child 11, after this in some child it is after 12 to 15 and onwards it is going formal operations means uh, some kind of uh, you can see in the pictures a uh, difficult formulas they can generate they can solve the mathematical problems. They can learn the complex games. They can learn the complex instrument and articles, how they are working. So that's ability to hypothesize, test and re-evaluate the hypothesis. Means why this occurs and how this occurs, that ability of thinking is developed in this stage. Children begins to thinking in a formal, systematic way. This is the main concept of formal operation stage, 11 to 15 years of age. Here I am not ending my session, but I am asking ourselves, being a teacher, 
what is in my mind how i should teach to the my students so that they can learn better way we see we are the nursing teachers and we do have the adult students so they have already passed through these stages of development now the question is that they have developed logical thinking so in my day to day teaching what i should innovate the teaching method so that the my students can learn better way this is the hope i wish from the all teachers of nursing from the throughout the india that they will think over this and they will uh, implement in their day to day teaching so that the nursing students can learn better way now hi how i can apply this to my teachings this is the question what i asked in the previous slide use visual aids like charts and illustrations but also incorporate a few more sophisticated graphs and diagrams to make them understand for example in our anatomy and physiological teaching we are using this charts and models in the labs and we are giving this so this is the how just not to be a theory part but in a practical lab sessions the students are exposed to the live models in charge and they will give the learning experience so that they can learn better way give step by step explanation and materials so that they can uh, understand well students should discuss social issues what are going in the society because at the adult age 18 years the students who are receive we have their logical thinking so social issues it may be pertaining to the nursing profession it may be pertaining to the other profession what is going on in the society and how it can be resolved that is the what our motive to make them learn the life lessons here have student discuss hypothetical other ones means let them think what they think about the other world what happening in the other world let them give the opportunity so that they can uh, make their life lessons learning more better way put a few essay questions on the test that we are doing which requires the student to give more than one final answer or simply answer from the rot memory try and teach broad concept rather than just facts and use material and ideas relevant to the students when teaching about civil war discuss other issues which have divided our countries means it is not the learning just nursing professionals we know our subjects are vast the content is more time is less in the syllabus is very confined so even if we can have the time we can teach through this techniques and uh, make students a socially good citizen so let's conclude this piaget's theory of development says in the throughout the four stages already our students has passed but we have to keep in mind that children do not always move from one state to another at the same time it means our age is a passing we are growing we are developing through the age as age is they expand they will always move from one stage to the next in the same order but you may have students in your classroom on a different levels it means we are receiving the adult students but it doesn't mean their intelligence is equal they are intelligently different and we have to treat them different so that every students in our classroom can learn in a better way we need to plan not only the theory aspect but in a day to day classroom teachings we are supposed to plan the classroom activities कमलेश सर प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सर कमलेश सर कैन यू हियर मी यस आई कैन ओके इज ओके ओके सर
ओके सो टू अंडरस्टैंड द बेटर वे हियर इट इज अ शॉर्ट वीडियो अबाउट द पियाजेट थियोरी ऑफ कॉग्निटिव डेवलपमेंट व्हिच विल मोर क्लियरली uh make our concepts clear regarding what we have talked right now just wait for a seconds it will start within this click Kamlesh, sir, the video is not audible. It is a full, full, full volume is there, madam. Sir, once stop and start again. Maybe is I having the some network. Sir, we can share it from here if it it is. Okay, okay, to okay. You can. Yes, you can. ओके थैंक यू सर Piaget's theory argues that we have to conquer four stages of cognitive development. First, the sensory motor stage. Second, the pre-operational stage. third the concrete operational stage and fourth the formal operational stage only once we have gone through all the stages at what age can vary we are able to reach full human intelligence one the sensory motor stage ages birth to 2 in the sensory motor stage we develop through experiences and movement our five senses Our brain wants to see, hear, smell, taste and touch as much as possible. First, we start with simple reflexes and soon after we develop our first habits. From 4 months old, we become aware of things beyond our own body and then as we get older, we learn to do things intentionally. A key milestone is the development of working memory or in Piaget terms our realization of object permanence before that our mom can show and then hide a teddy and we would think it's gone after we understand that objects continue to exist even when we can't see them we start becoming curious about everything we want to smell flowers taste food listen to sounds and talk to strangers to explore more we move We learn to sit, crawl, stand, walk and even to run. This increased physical mobility consequently leads to increased cognitive development. But we remain egocentric, meaning we can perceive the world only from our own point of view. 2. The pre-operational stage, ages 2 to 7. Our thinking is mainly categorized through symbolic functions and intuitive thoughts. We have lots of fantasies and believe objects are alive. As we are not able to apply specific cognitive operations, 
Piaget calls this stage pre-operational. We learn to speak and understand that words, images and gestures are symbols for something else. When we draw our family, we are not concerned about drawing each person to scale, but rather with their symbolic meanings. We love to play pretend, which allows us to experience something new and learn a lot. At around age four, most of us become very curious and ask many questions. We want to know everything. We can call it the birth of primitive reasoning. Piaget calls it the intuitive age, because while we realize that we have a vast amount of knowledge, we have no idea how we acquired it. Our thinking in this stage is still pretty egocentric. We think others see the world like we do and still don't understand that they see it differently. 3. The Concrete Operational Stage, ages 7 to 11. We finally discover logic and we develop concrete cognitive operations, such as sorting objects in a certain order. One example of this is inductive reasoning, which means that if we see someone eating a cookie, we can draw a conclusion and then make a generalization. And we now get the concept of conservation. We understand that if we pour orange juice from a normal glass to a taller one, the amount stays the same. Our younger sister will pick the taller glass, thinking she gets more. By the same logic, we only now can understand that if 3 plus 5 equals 8, then 8 minus 3 must equal 5. Our brain learns to rearrange our thoughts, to classify and build concrete operational mental structures. For example, we now know that we can reverse an action by doing the opposite. Excited by our new mental abilities, we apply them in conversations, activities, when we learn to write and in school. As a result, we get to know ourselves better. We begin to understand that our thoughts and feelings are unique and not necessarily those of others. That means that we learn to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. 4. The formal operational stage, age 12 plus. Once we become teenagers, we become formally operational. We now have the ability to think more rationally about abstract concepts and hypothetical events. Our advanced cognitive abilities allow us to understand abstract concepts such as success and failure, love and hate. We form a deeper understanding of our own identity and our morality. We now also think that we understand why people behave the way they behave and as a result can become more compassionate. Our brain can now do deductive reasoning, which means we can compare two statements and reach a logical generalization. Our new mental skills allow us to plan our life systematically and prioritize, and we can make assumptions about events that have no necessary relation to reality. We can now also philosophize and just think about thinking itself. Our new sense for our identity now also creates egocentric thoughts and some start to see an imaginary audience watching them all the time. Piaget believed in lifelong learning but insisted that the formal operational stage is the final stage of our cognitive development. Jean Piaget's first interests were animals and he published his first scientific paper on albino sparrows in 1907 when he was just 11 years old. In 1920, he began working with standardized intelligence tests. He realized that younger children consistently make types of mistakes that older children do not. He concluded that they must think differently and spent the rest of his life studying the intellectual development of children. I hope everyone has cleared their views regarding this Piaget's theory through this small video. Now, we can move to the next session of this Kohlberg, Lawrence Kohlberg's theory of moral development. So just a second, so I'm sharing the slide.
i hope this screen is visible to everyone hello yes sir uh, is screen is visible to no no sir say the show in the folder only kindly show your ppt you know? mm, sir a double sharing is there just my my, my my sharing is paused somewhere linchi linchi ma'am if possible you share from your side uh, having the some error linchi madam can you hear yes sir yes sir uh, if... uh, kamlesh sir can you please stop this sharing okay. we can share from here sir sure okay okay so now we are going to start this lawrence kolbeck's theory of moral development so again welcome in this session everyone next please so why we want to learn this moral development theory it's our objective to examine the stages of moral development as described by lawrence kolbeck accurately applied to specific moral dilemmas next please Lawrence Kolberg let us know who he is he for many years he was a professor at Harvard University he became famous for his work there beginning in the early 1970s he started as a developmental psychologist and then moved to the field of moral education he was particularly well known for his theory of moral development which he popularized through research studies conducted at Harvard Center for Moral Development next please His theory of moral development was dependent on the thinking of Sir Jean Piaget and John Dewar, American philosopher. He was also published, also inspired by James Mark Baldwin. This man had emphasized that human being develop philosophically and psychologically in a progressive way. Next, please. Kolberg believed and he was able to demonstrate through studies. that people progress in their moral reasoning that is in their basis for ethical behavior through a series of stages he believed that there are were six identifiable stages which could be more generally classified into three levels next please so we develop morally so the self centeredness to the other centeredness throughout the growth periods next please so before going to the stages of develop moral development of lawrence kolberg he is given the six key points to keep in mind number 1 one must progress to the stages in order one cannot get a higher stage without passing through the stage immediately same is in the growth moral development is growth and like all growth take place according to a predetermined sequence it is sequential order as in the growth one cannot walk before crawl same way here in the kolberg theory moral development one cannot pass the next stage without completing the coming stage second subjects cannot comprehend moral reasoning at a stage more than one stage beyond their own means in what stage they are they are morally reasoning only that thing they cannot comprehend in the next stage level if johnny is oriented to see the good almost exclusively as that which brings him satisfaction how will he understand a concept of good in which the good may bring him no tangible pleasure at all suppose we are telling to the children that this is the good but if it word good itself or the thing what we have given if you not giving the tangible pleasure the child will not understand that is the good the next please individual are cognitively attracted to reasoning one level above their own present predominant level the person has questions and problem to the solution for which are less satisfying at his present level since reasoning at one stage higher is intelligible and 
since it makes sense and resolve more difficulty it is more attractive means one can think reasonably to solve the problem but they may or they may not next please movement through the stages is affected when cognitive disequilibrium is created that is when a person cognitive outlook is not adequate to cope with a given moral dilemma the person who is growing will look for more adequate ways of solving problems if he has no problems or dilemmas he is not likely to look for solutions he will not grow morally next please it is quite possible for a human being too physically mature but not morally mature this is very good example here is given if a child is spoiled never having to accommodate for other need he may never generate enough question to propel him to a higher level of moral reasoning the next please polberg believe that only about 25% of person ever grow to level 6 the majority remain at level 4 if polberg's observations are true then level 6 thinker would be in the minority in fact they might even be misunderstood and rejected by level 4 majority these are the six key points what the kolberg has given for the stages of moral development based on this he has given the six stages of development now let us see next please so this level 1 compile or compete it is almost self centered 7 to 11 years of age a person's moral reasoning result from a consequences of actions such as a punishment reward or exchange of favors and from the physical power of authority figures the first level of moral thinking is the generally found at the elementary school level next please stage 1 fear of punishment not law or justice but cost to me the child thinks what it cost me and consciously it is a self protection they will do everything for not punishing and that's why they are following the order but it is not just as a law or justice next please state 2 is a profit minimize the pain maximize the pleasure what is in the child mind for the moral development if i am doing this i will be happy if i am doing this i will be punished or i will have pain right behavior means acting in one's own best interest reasoning is largely based on an attitude of if, if you scratch my back and i will scratch yours conscience is in this stage is a cunning the next please level 2 that is the conventional level it is a group center at the at, at the age of 25 to 20, 15 to 25 let us see the description a person moral reasoning involves maintaining the expectation of one's family peer group or nations for one's own sake regardless of immediate consequences and a desire to respect maintain support and justify the existing social order means from the age of 15 years a child is morally developed to think about the others till the age he is the self centered stage 3 group loyalty obligation to one's family gang one earns acceptance by being nice behavior is often judged by intention well they mean well conscience is loyalty here next next please stage 4 that is law and order begin around age of 15 increases to the age of 25 without law society would be the chaos right behavior consists of doing one's duty and respecting authority flaws in the system are due to the failure of individual who do not obey the conscience is good citizenship so we are reaching the adult students and they have this law and order they follow our instructions they sometimes rebel but it is they are unaware about the consequences of this law and order and that's why they rebel we need to make them aware about what is the law and order and why society expect from the this next please level 3 that is post conventional level internalized truth center 
a person reason according to moral values and principle which are valid and applicable apart from authority of the groups moral reasoning becomes more comprehensive reflects universal principle and is based on internalized things next please state five that is the common good 21 25 loyalty to truth conscience is reason next please Stage six, universal ethical principle that is integrity can be reached beginning in the late twenties. Principles, no matter what price, choices are grounded in the genuine moral interest in the well-being of others, regardless of who they are. So, since late eight twenty, the individual learns the benefiting others, well-being of others, and now it is time for us to. make our students learn that they can care for the patient in a right way this is the right time late 20s when the second year students can understand conscience is personal integrity the next please so here in short what the stages are saying 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that is pre conventional conventional and post conventional what is the social orientation for this age group 2 to 4 obedience and punishment 4 to 7 individualism and instrumentalism like that way the stages are there and be morally developed according to lawrence kolbach's theory this next please now based on this lawrence kolbach's theory of moral development he gave us the some final thoughts Kolbach's skill has to do with moral thinking, not moral action. Remember this word. As everyone knows, people who can talk at high moral level may not behave accordingly. Consequently, we would not expect perfect correlation between moral judgment and moral action. Remember, we are telling that के आते के दांत दिखाने के अलग और खाने के अलग. still corbel think that there is should be some relationship between the moral action and moral thinking next please as a general hypothesis he proposes that moral behavior is more consistent predictable and responsible at the high stages why let us see some of the examples next please so look let us see the summary of this uh, lawrence kolbach's theory of moral development because the stages themselves increasingly employ more stable and general standard that is principles for example where is the stage 3 basis decision on the other's feeling which can vary stage 4 refers to the set rules and laws thus we can expect that moral behavior too will become more consistent as a people move up to the sequences next please so here are the some situation given uh, to understand at what stage is there of lawrence kolbach's moral development in our life span a short example is given here asli borrow her father's car she and her friend kayla were very late coming home that evening they were further delayed at the stop light on the quiet street after what seemed to be an unnecessary long wait Kayla remind Ashley that they were late. Ashley continue to wait, insist that if everyone ignores stop light when it was personally convenient to do so, no street would be safe. So here Ashley is think reasonably. If I am going, the light is not allowing, and I am going, then like that way, if everyone is going, the street will have the chaos. So everyone has to follow the law and order. That is what. as least think in this stage next situation please here another one is but what we are experiencing in our examinations jordan was not prepared for a difficult chemistry exam so he wrote some important formulas on a slip of a paper which he put in his pocket before the test just before the test began the teacher informed the class that any student caught cheating would automatically fail in the test even though jordan needed the information he wrote in the slip 
He did not use it because the teacher stood too close to his desk during the entire exam. So at what stage and why? We need to think about the Jordan, his brow that slips, whatever is written regarding the exam. He was needed to write in the exam, but the teacher is standing behind just near to him and he was not able to put out the dead slips. Because why? He followed the law and order. The teacher is instructed strictly. If you're cheating, then you will fail the test. So this is how in the real life situations, our moral development makes a difference in our moral action. So thanks a lot. It's not finished, but uh, I hope that uh, you will share the video, please. Ms. Anli, please share the video about the call box. Lawrence Kohlberg's theory claims that our development of moral reasoning happens in six stages. The stages themselves are structured in three levels, pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. To understand this better, imagine a conflict at school. There is a fight in the schoolyard. Two ninth graders are beating up Tom. Those who watch the fight are at different stages of moral development. Let's see what they do and how they justify their behavior. At stage one, we make moral judgments based on obedience and punishment. Finn's sense of good or bad is directly linked to whether he gets punished or not. Finn sees what is happening to his friend and wants to help, but he doesn't because he is afraid the teacher may punish him if he gets caught fighting. He asks himself, how can I avoid punishment? At stage two, we are motivated by self-interest. Mary decides to intervene and help Tom. She knows that she might get punished, but she also knows that she could become a victim herself someday. If she helps Tom now, he might help her in the future. She is asking herself, what's in it for me? At stage three, Interpersonal accord and conformity guide our moral judgment. Betty sees the fight and wants to intervene, but when she realizes that all the others are just watching, she decides not to get involved. She wants others to see that she is a good girl who is conforming with the ethics of the community. She asks herself, what do others think of me? At stage four, we value authority and want to maintain social order. When the teacher sees the group fighting, he immediately steps in and shouts, Stop! Fighting at school is forbidden. He feels that, above all, it is important to follow the rules, otherwise chaos breaks out. He feels it is his duty to uphold the rules that sustain a functioning society. He asks himself, How can I maintain law and order? At stage 5, we understand rules as a social contract, as opposed to a strict order. Jessie, who watches from afar, is not sure how she feels about this. To her, rules make sense only if they serve the right purpose. Obviously, the school rules prohibit fighting, but maybe Tom deserves to finally learn his lesson. Just yesterday, he punched a young girl from grade 1. She asks herself, does a rule truly serve all members of the community? At stage six, we are guided by universal ethical principles. All those involved now have to face the headmaster. He first explains the school rules and why they exist. He then clarifies that rules are valid only if they are grounded in justice. The commitment to justice carries with it an obligation to disobey unjust rules. The headmaster's highest moral principle is compassion. He believes that all people should learn to understand each other's viewpoints and that they don't feel alone with their feelings. He asks, what are the abstract ethical principles that serve my understandings of justice? At the pre-conventional level, Finn is driven by fear and Mary by self-interest. Both judge what is right or wrong by the direct consequences they expect for themselves and not by social norms. This form of reasoning is common among children. At the conventional level, Betty responds to peer pressure, and the teacher follows the rules. Their morality is centered around what society regards as right. 
At this level, the fairness of rules is seldom questioned. It is common to think like this during adolescence and adulthood. At the post-conventional level, Jesse knows that things are complicated because individuals may disobey rules inconsistent with their own morality. The headmaster follows a universal ethical idea, at complete disconnect with what society thinks or the rules say. To him, everything is solved through compassion. The right behavior, in his opinion, is therefore never a means to an end, but always an end in itself. Not every person reaches this level. The American psychologist Lawrence Kohlberg based his work on Piaget's theory of cognitive development. In order to confirm his theory of stages of moral development, Kohlberg interviewed boys between the ages of 10 and 16. He analyzed how they would justify their decision when confronted with different hypothetical moral dilemmas. We will now present to you the most famous moral dilemma Kohlberg presented to his students. Let's see what you would do. The Heinz Dilemma A woman was on her deathbed. There was only one drug that the doctors thought might save her. The druggist that made that particular medicine sold it for 10 times the price of the production costs. The sick woman's husband, Heinz, was poor and could not afford to buy the drug, not even with the financial help of his friends. Heinz then asked the pharmacist to sell it to him for half the price, but he refused. To save the life of his wife, Heinz broke into the man's laboratory and stole the medicine. Now tell us. Should Heinz have stolen the drug? Would it change anything if Heinz didn't love his wife? What if the person dying was not his wife, but a stranger? Should the police arrest the druggist for murder if the wife had died? Please write your answers and their justifications in the comments below. Okay, you can stop the video now. No. Oh, good. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir, sir. Question are saving here. Yes. It's uh, some question from Amina Ahmed. From Amina Ahmed. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I am hearing it and uh, saying that uh, what the Amina Ahmed is question. Uh, share some of the criticism of Jean Piaget theory and give your view on how can we use it in a clinical practice. Uh, see, uh, Jean Piaget has given the cognitive development theory. Now, what we experience in our students are already have the adulthood. They are of the 18 years of age. So, uh, as for the my knowledge, to criticize the Jean Piaget theory, there are the, some criticisms, but we will not apply here. What we will apply in our clinical practices, the students are learned and we can actually give them the learning exposure in a way that what suppose for example we are putting the, our students uh, in a medical ward for one week then during the one week what the students will do in a first day second day third day fourth day fifth day sixth day a weekly micro planning needs to be given to the students so then the, they can learn more things and they can have the skill skills on hand and they will remember everything they are already developed according to the piaget's theory the second is the our child truly develop the cognitive function according to piaget theory how much applicable in our life see there are the lots of theory not only the piaget's theory uh, cognitive development theories are many more so each and every is applicable for example in our uh, nursing profession, Florence Nightingale theory of environment is also applicable. Same way, in the childhood development, many more theories are there. We are supposed to discuss in a detail in the, uh, I hope, Puja uh, uh, State will plan the, these criticisms of the theories, all, not only the childhoods, but uh, others also, the normal theories, what we had in the uh, previous sessions also. That can be, it is a use topic and it will take a lot of time but for our students of teaching or in a clinical practice uh, micro planning is very important to make them learn 
their self motivation their learning environment is a very much important so that the students can learn better way here are it some of the age expansions are there limited to that i hope uh, amina ahmed is satisfied with the, my answer if still you are queried you are most welcome to any time call upon me or call upon over the gujarat branch president and secretary we will help definitely this okay yes, sir. anyone have any question i think is uh, clear everything is sir sure okay so i would like to thanks to kamlesh sir for imparting a knowledge of cognitive theories and the moral development theory it was very informative and educative session all the participants thank you sir for accepting our it's invitation a, it's Hello. our responsibility sir we are the teachers and we are the responsibility of sharing the knowledge sharing is the power yes sir but you are giving the your valuable times and accepting our invitation and information about the development theories and the related to child yes, i am very much pleased to have this session webinar as a resource person okay then i would like to extend gratitude to nta president dr farooq sir state president mr binu sir and organization secretary professor himanshu sir for giving me an opportunity lastly thank you all the delegates for attending this wonderful session once again thanks to all thank you all welcome all thank thank you all of you it was a great opportunity kamlesh sir it was a very interactive and a very informative sessions we had a lot of comments regarding uh, the session being very informative and interesting as well as you had a start that uh, we are not just going to learn but enjoy and definitely that was fulfilled through your sessions it was a really beautiful sessions and I'm thank you priyesh sir yes thank you priyesh sir for giving us your time as a moderator for this webinar and as sir has suggested maybe we can have some more uh, webinars on uh, theories so we can get more informations not just regarding the childhood but other theories as well and uh, learn about their applications in our nursing profession overall so that was a really good suggestions maybe we can go through that also thank you all for having uh, with us and it was a great session we'll be also meeting on sunday because tomorrow is uh, independence day we are observing a holiday and on sunday we'll also be having the sessions okay so uh, i hope we all will be gathering again on 16th for another session and that would be the end of this webinar thank you all have a nice day okay thank you thank you kamlesh sir thank you priya sir thanks to all the participants who participated in this uh, webinar series uh, advance happy independence day uh, next sessions will be held on 16th that is same time at 11:30 so once again you can participate on 16 also thank you once again thank you to everyone welcome Thank you all a very happy independence day